Hi Branch, uh, my name is Ivan Marwaha and I'm the author of the recently published book What Millennials Want. Hi, I'm Karna Azara Parikh and I'm a writer. Hi, I'm Sam Dorimple and I'm an author and producer. Uh, my book came out in August and I'm really excited to share some stories with you guys. Uh, in my book, I, I draw on more than 900 interviews I conducted with millennials across India, big cities and small towns. And what I really talk about are the economic aspirations, the social views and the political attitudes of uh, Indian millennials. And more importantly, what India's future would look like uh, by talking about India's youth, who are India's future. Um, the story I'm writing about for The Brunch is about the future and what that would look like when youth begin to uh, grow older and when they get more responsibilities and how we can collectively come together to shape in their future more positively and more productively. So the idea of course was past, present, future which is I guess a take on Dickens' A Christmas Carol, uh, something I love re-watching at this time of the year. My story was a story of the present and it contains within it a small lesson for the way forward after these last few very difficult years that we've had. And I'm someone who often tries to call up my life and what it is and what I hope for it to be. And I've tried to work that aspect into the story as well. So I've written about uh, this experience that I had just a week ago uh, when I was in Hyderabad. Don't think that like history is already written because there's always new stories to tell and I was wandering around in Hyderabad and uh, I came across this insane palace that had been mentioned once or twice. Um, it was just out outside this military cantonment. Um, but it turned out to be the home of this Yemeni Sultan for 200 years. And there's this huge interaction between Yemen and Hyderabad, um, including the story of how kind of Halim ends up in Hyderabad. Uh, that virtually no one seemed to have written about and I had stumbled on this massive connection and it got me very excited. I started interviewing people about it. And so I think that the piece is about how um, we often think that the past has been written and the past is, is, is over, it's done, but it's not. There's always new stories to tell um, and we just have to find them. It's been a very, uh, it's definitely been the first time I've done this and a lot of, you know, my book involved me going out to small town India and to these campaign rallies and, you know, talking to young people over there. And so I was usually the one taking the photos of where I was going and so it's definitely an, a very new experience for me to be the one who is being photographed. But I love, you know, being able to talk about my work and being able to share it with the world and. Um, and doing things like these, you know, help me reach out to new readers. And so I'm really excited to share my story and the stories of those who I met with you guys. Well, uh, in my case, I guess it's a bit different because before I started writing professionally, or let's say before I was published, I hosted a television show and I used to do a ton of photo shoots. What was really nice though was posing as a writer um, and knowing in my heart that I am a published writer. So that was lovely today. I'll be completely honest, this is my uh, second time ever doing a photo shoot like this. So it's been an amazing experience. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was great fun. Um, it, was, it was also quite nice because uh, I happened to meet both of the other people, um, Karina and Vivan, in the last two months. <laughs> and so we all were just like, hey, what are you doing here? <laughs> so it was quite nice. Oh my God, social media is so incredibly important. I get messages from on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, from people all over the country, people in Orissa, people in Karnataka, people in Kerala, people in Kashmir are messaging me 
because they saw my book somewhere, either a friend had posted about it on a, on a story or they saw an article that I had written and they just, you know, they ended up buying the book and they wanted to share their thoughts with me. And social media gives me this incredible platform to reach out to so many more people that I might not have otherwise physically interacted with. So I can be doing an Instagram live session or I can have a conversation with someone sitting in Delhi, but people in Jabalpur, Indore and Bhopal and Calicut and Mysore are watching it. And you no longer need to be defined by your geography or where you're uh, physically living because you can now access so many more opportunities and meet so many more people on social media. Oh God, social media. I don't want to diss it because it is what got my first book through a pandemic. You know, we didn't have uh, the luxury of a book launch or a book tour or anything of the sort. I couldn't meet uh, readers of the book. Uh, I couldn't do readings. There were no lit fests. So at that time, social media is all I actually had to promote my book and put it out there. Uh, and it really, really helped. So I can't deny the value of it, but a part of me feels quite sad about that because I do feel that writers shouldn't have to do that in order to have readers reach their work or their work reach their readers, yeah. I found that my, uh, a lot of my career, including how I first got involved um, with writing, uh, came through Instagram specifically. I always take photos of places that I'm going and write big captions and that eventually got me into writing other stuff. Um, and a lot of my friends in the industry, uh, I've met through them finding my Instagram page. Um, and so I, I think personally for me, it's been one of the most important things. So I actually uh, recently had uh, someone who was studying for the UPSC, uh, re who's a student in Odisha. Uh, reach out to me and tell me like oh my god like you know even though I've been studying for the UPSC I've realized so many things from your book that have made me think deeper about the things that I'm studying about and in my book I do talk about government jobs quite a bit and this person is you know now even more committed to uh, their UPSC you know uh, examination but you know my book sort of gave him many leads to pursue and to learn more about so that was really nice but you know more broadly I just love it. I just love getting all types of you know responses from those who read the book including po positive and in yeah. negative as well because uh, you know people who shared some critical comments with me have done so respectfully and they've they've made me think about things that I hadn't considered earlier um, and you know really engage in a conversation and dialogue with them oh you know honestly for me it's always always moving because Oh, it's, it's very special when someone comes up and tells you that something that you wrote touched them or, you know, changed their lives. And I'm always humbled by it when it happens. But I think what really moves me most of all is when people, especially young women, come to me and say that they were inspired to write after reading my work. That really always touches my heart. I just, <laughs> I just, I mean, this happened, uh... This happened a few weeks back when I was at Manu Palai's book launch um, and someone, <laughs> someone came up to me and just recognised me and it turned out that they were the, the head of Mad Moogle memes <laughs> and they were just like <laughs> telling me how much they loved my page and how much they loved my writing. So that was really nice. <laughs> Oh, that's a really tough one. Um, I think authors are more committed to stories mm -hmm. and writers are more committed to ideas. So when you're an author, you can, you can be a, a, a fiction novelist mm -hmm. and you've created characters and you've created stories and plot lines in your head of how these people are interacting. But if you're a writer, you're, uh, or I identify more as a writer than an author, um, I'm, I'm talking about ideas and I'm writing about concepts and I am writing about people but to, to further certain ideas and I'm not really inventing characters the way uh, an author would. Being published. <laughs> I mean, that's the simple answer. Uh, but I do want to say that now having been published, I do think that it is 
absolutely fair to call yourself a writer without having been published because you know a writer all it takes is you know you putting a uh, pen to paper and your heart out there to call yourself that and i think that's very valuable as well there isn't one <laughs> i think <laughs> i think authors uh, authors are published writers but everyone's a writer